Uh, I'm on a bit of a video roll tonight, um, but everything I talk about in these videos I feel are important issues that need to be discussed. So um, just a quick, uh, quick point before getting on to the subject of this video. Uh, I've just written to the Times um, regarding um, the last video I made, the report on the solicitor's firm suing uh, the man who uh, wrote a negative review. Um, the more I think about it, the more I think that it was definitely an own goal. Um, and actually he had uh, apparently offered to take down the review if they just um, paid back the money he had paid up front. So the more I think about it, the more uh, they, I don't think Summerfield Brown has done themselves any favours. I'm not saying his review was right or wrong, but the optics of it are not good. And, you know, all the subsequent reviews on Trustpilot are ironically about their action, not about the original review. Anyway, um, in the same edition of the Times, this is the 8th of February, they have not one but two reports on um, some very questionable uh, implications of Britain's universities' links to China. Now, it may seem that I'm a little bit obsessed with China of late, but these are issues that cannot be ignored. They are issues that are going to define the century. I mean, in terms of West and China's relations, so frankly, they're hard to avoid. Um, like I said, there's two reports here. I'm not going to read them both out at length, but I'm going to touch on them. Um, in fact, I'll just show you the cover. It'll be the easiest way to do this. Uh, okay. Just let that stabilise a bit. Reports by Matt Ethan and Billy Kember. Um, hundreds of academics investigated over weapons links to China. Almost 200 British academics are being investigated on suspicion of unwittingly helping the Chinese government build weapons of mass destruction the Times can reveal. They are suspected of violating strict export laws intended to prevent intellectual property and highly sensitive sub decks being handed to hostile states. The individuals could face a maximum of 10 years in prison found in breach of the Export Control Order 2008. Source told the Times that the government was preparing to send enforcement notices to up to 200 UK citizens working at more than a dozen British universities. I might just read out this whole report because it's not too long. The individuals are suspected of transferring world-leading research in advanced military technology, such as aircraft, missile designs and cyber weapons to China. Security services are concerned that British intellectual property could fall into the hands of the Chinese government helping Beijing to develop weapons of mass destruction. Officials, um, I was just interrupting myself there, China obviously already has nuclear warheads. Um, officials also fear the technology could be used in the repression of political dissidents, uh, minorities such as the Uyghur Muslims. Many of the academics under investigation are suspected of unwittingly breaching the laws by striking commercial deals with Chinese companies. We could be seeing dozens of academics in courts before long, a source said. If even 10% lead to the successful prosecution, we'd be looking at around 20 academics going to jail for helping the Chinese build super weapons. Government spokesman said exporters of military goods and those engaged in the transfer of military technology specified in the Export Control Order 2008 require a license to export or transfer from the UK. Um, what I find interesting is the term there, unwittingly. Um, it may be unwittingly, it may be um, on the understanding that they're liaising with civil authorities in China, civilian authorities, but you know that strikes me as profoundly naive given the content of this information they're transferring um, and given that it's going to a totalitarian state. So my gut reaction there is that is pretty naive of these academics. Um, now there's another report and I think this is on a related but separate issue. Um, 
I'm not sure if this is a continuation of the same issue or or it's slightly separate. British research may be helping Chinese military. I think it's another report on the same issue. But it's worth talking about this a bit. Um, more than a dozen universities may be inadvertently assisting the Chinese military sharing research in sensitive areas ranging from hypersonic technology to graphene. I think tank claims, I don't know what graphene is. Sifitas alleges that 20 British universities have dealings with 29 Chinese universities, nine companies that have military links, including with Chinese weapons conglomerate. Now, that is astonishingly naive if they don't think that there's going to be dodgy um, implications for that. Um, Radimir Tilcott, uh, Tilcott, the study's lead author, um, and a former Treasury official raised concerns that research sponsored by Chinese organizations could have inadvertently dual use in military capacity. He highlighted research into hypersonic technology at a time when Beijing is seeking to develop hypersonic missiles and graphene research while the material is started is starting to be used in armored Chinese helicopters as potentially problematic. Um, this was uh, in relation to, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm not reading out every part of the report here, just because of time reasons. The development comes as HM Revenue and Customs is preparing to inform up to 200 British, yet yeah, sort of a bit more detail on the same report, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll just read a little bit about some of the responses from universities. Cambridge University said that all of its research was subject to ethics governance and export control regulation. Imperial College London told the Mail on Sunday that science is a global endeavour and we are proud to work with our peers in academia and industry all over the world. Um, the Civitas report, Arming China, question mark, the Chinese military complex and its potential exploitation of scientific research at UK universities alleges that China Electronics Technology Corporation, which has spoken of leveraging civilian electronic systems to benefit Chinese military, has backed work at four Chinese universities. These military-linked universities in turn have ties with seven British universities. Manchester University is accused of having provided China's main nuclear missile conglomerate with a UK taxpayer fund research centre. It has also worked with Chinese funders to develop applications for graphene, the revolutionary high strength material. The university has said it works closely with the relevant authorities to ensure it is fully compliant with all policies and export protocol. Um, I don't have much sympathy for these excuses that the universities and academics are coming out with. Um, they strike me as kind of um, being profoundly naive for a start. I mean, whatever good intentions are there, like uh, international spirit of scientific research, that's great. You know, we see that this happens in space. So um, Major Tim Peake, for example, worked with the Russians when he was at the International Space Station. So there are examples of countries working together when in other areas they would be at loggerheads. But I think back here on Earth, um, there is an astonishing naivety from our universities. Well, aside from naivety or greed, it's one or the other. I, um, I frankly don't have much respect for their arguments and their position. As right now, the Chinese regime should not be normalised as just another country. I really don't think it should. This is a regime that has been accused of genocide. And so long as there are mass incarceration camps for re-education, I think that when British universities are dealing with China, when they are taking Chinese blood money, and frankly, that's why I see it, um, I would seriously question their moral standing and their ethical judgment. I think they're looking at this from a purely academic perspective and they are ignoring the fact that in China, in the Chinese system, every aspect of life has links to state power, every aspect. You know, there's very little scope for independent academic opinion in China. It all ultimately has to be sanctioned by the state. So it shouldn't at all be surprising that the Chinese military apparatus has links to Chinese universities. 
So for British academics to claim they just thought they were working with civilian bodies strikes me as just incredibly naive. Um, I've looked at certain British universities and their China departments, and you know they're full of glowing praise for our wonderful relationship and shared research. And you know basically it strikes me as going out of their way to pander to Beijing. Uh, and in many cases, these departments get a lot of money from Beijing. Now, I railed against Ofcom for a long time because I felt that they were sitting on the fence. Ofcom's finally made the right decision. So that's, you know, uh, I hope they take action with RT, but it's one battle over. But, you know, I really do think that we need a massive reset in all areas, or at least most areas of our our relations with China. Quite frankly, um, if there is a new Cold War, it is one that China has has created with its its disregard for international law, its disregard for human rights, its lack of transparency, and its belligerence at diplomatic level. Um, and I, I am really tired of Western stooges for Beijing. And frankly, it's quite difficult to see it any other way regarding these university departments. Um, I really, really think the heads of these departments really need to explore their conscience and say, do we really want to be so closely tied to a regime that is incarcerating millions of people? No other reason than their ethnicity. I believe that the Chinese regime needs to be polarised. It's not going to happen from other totalitarian states, so it's down to liberal democracies like the UK. Um, so for these academics to, you know, say they don't know or that they have good intentions, I, I'm, I don't have much sympathy for that argument. I really don't. Because it's not that difficult to put, you know, to say two plus two equals four in this situation. Um, basic understanding of how the Chinese state works would help. And what's that's why I'm a bit more cynical that they aren't just being naive. Um, I think it's more than that. I think there's actually greed involved here. I think they are putting their ethical concerns to the side just because they feel that the only way to kind of go forward in research partnership is by working with China. Um, I think there's many countries that we can work with that we are far more aligned with you know, politically and in terms of values, Japan and South Korea for a start. You know, why must there be this obsessive focus on relying on China? It's kind of like, because it's a powerful country, because it's the biggest economy, um, I, I think it's fear talking, quite frankly. I think British academics are frightened of China. They're frightened of offending China. They know if they cut these pro programs off, then, you know, the Chinese embassy will lash out. And there might be repercussions for uh, British institutions linked up in China. Well, that's unfortunate, but we cannot have a negotiation. We cannot have a situation where we are working purely on threats of the Chinese embassy responding. Um, that has to be unacceptable. Um, and I'm not saying that every Chinese academic is a bad person or they're, you know, a spy or something like that, but they've no choice. This is why Huawei was a problem. Despite their assurances, the fact of the matter is Huawei ultimately has to answer to the Chinese government. And even now, even now, with very likely a genocide happening in Xinjiang, there are still people that will not wake up to what the Chinese regime is. You know, they may think that they are just cooperating with Chinese universities, but every Chinese university, like every institution in China, ultimately has to answer to the Communist Party. Every single one. The Communist Party of China has an iron grip on every aspect of life. And until these fools understand that, it's it, I find it infuriating. You know, I say fools, but what is worse is they maybe know what's going on. They maybe know full well that these are 
shady deals. So I do think a lot of pressure needs to be put on them. A lot of pressure needs to be put on these academics and university departments to really, really come clean about um, end of these connections and how that ties into... Um, I mean, the, these reports are alarming. Obviously, it wouldn't look good if academics were sent to jail, but they're not above reproach and they're not above criticism. And if they are knowingly, knowingly, giving China information on weapons, that's, um, you know, I don't think that warrants a lot of sympathy. I really don't. And if things do escalate, what potential consequence could that have for our national security? So, frankly, I don't have much sympathy with them. Um, if this is just a case of they had honest intentions and they believed it was simply academic cooperation, um, maybe that could be forgiven. But, you know, if that's their position, then they should be asking questions of their Chinese counterparts. And I don't think they're prepared to do that. Because if you look at these departments, and I'm repeating myself here, but if you look at, you know, the websites on these universities, all those departments are interested in is rushing out praise for China and their ties to China. You know, if it was just about culture, like, say, for example, celebrating Chinese New Year, that wouldn't be such an issue. But we're talking here about weapon systems. This is a real national security issue. Um, so. I do think there needs to be a lot of pressure put on these universities because I think, um, you know, they kind of have this arrogant sense that we can do as we please. It's all in the name of academic freedom. I mean, you know, take Sheffield, for example, because it's one of the universities that's involved in perhaps not this, but certainly Sheffield's China department is very, very keen to you know, suck up to Beijing. The very same university paid students to monitor fellow students for microaggressions. So there is a, a really perverse lack of priorities in our universities where they are pandering to totalitarian regimes, yet actually um, betraying democratic values in their own domain. It's what our university should be doing, by all means, have an international outreach, but it cannot be at the compromise of British values. It just can't. There will be areas that we need to work with China on. Um, climate change, uh, probably uh, conservation efforts when it comes to animals. I mean, there is probably, has probably been some improvements in terms of cracking down on the illegal wildlife trade. So that's an area we could probably work with China on. But, you know, right now, um, I do think we seriously need to review all our relations. I'm not saying cut off 100%. Probably even in the war, um, Britain had some communication channels with the Third Reich on some level. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But, um, you know, there's rarely a situation where there is a 100% disconnect. I mean, during the Cold War, there was always communication between Moscow and the West. So I'm not suggesting that we just 100% cut off all ties to China. That wouldn't be realistic. You know, there's people who are in mixed relations and there's a lot of areas there that things could get complicated. But we do need to send out a message to China that their threats and their bullying behaviour um, and their attempts to undermine us won't stand. We need to be very bold, brave, and just, you know, do the right thing. So I'm immensely frustrated by these China stooges who put money or post ties before values. And they can deny that, but I mean, how do they explain this? They can say they're, they're sticking within the framework of legislation, but, you know, that's just basically, it's like lawyers talk. Like, you know, kind of diplomatic answer. They need, I think they need to 
just explore their conscience here. Incidentally, and um, this isn't totally unrelated, um, when the Hong Kong protests were really uh, prevalent in 2019, there were very um, there were very real problems with Hong Kong students being physically threatened and bullied by mainland Chinese peers. I know that because I spoke to one of them. I interviewed him, um, and as part of my journalism course. Uh, he spoke anonymously and, you know, he was genuinely scared even to speak out to me. Uh, not a single Chinese student was expelled, not one, despite the very credible claims of these things happening. Uh, instead, some of our universities just made these kind of pathetic, generic, oh, everyone needs to respect each other memos. Um, I take the view if a Chinese student has come to the other side of the world, and thinks they have a right to push around fellow students that don't agree with their politics. Um, you know, they don't deserve to study here. They should be kicked out. I mean, there is absolutely no way that a British citizen um, would be allowed to behave that way in China. It would be unthinkable. So we need to send out a message to China in general that this bullying isn't going to be tolerated. That's what it is. You know, it's at state level right down to the imported, um, export, I should say, nationalism. That's not to say every Chinese person is a bad person. I'm not talking about collective qualification. But the the things I'm talking about, everything can be verified and it's real. And uh, we need to wake up. We just need to wake up and get much tougher in a lot of other areas. Leave it there.